Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video, we used null analysis on the very same problem. In this example, we're going to use the same circuit, but we're going to do mesh analysis. The difference is in the previous video with nodal analysis, we tried to find the voltage drops across each of these branches. So we can say that the current going into the branch point equals the two currents leaving the branch point. What we're doing here instead with mesh analysis, we're going to add up the voltages going around each mesh. So we have two meshes or two loops. And we add up the voltages. I1 will be the current flowing to the first loop and I2 will be the current flowing to the second loop or the second mesh. So we use what we call the Kirchhoff's voltage loop analysis method, where we simply add up all the voltages around each loop. We have two unknowns, I1 and I2. We're going to end up with two equations because we have two meshes. We solve them simultaneously. So adding up all the voltages going around the first mesh. Voltage drop across the, the current source is equal to zero. And then we have the voltage drop across the inductor. So that means we have minus the inductance, J8, times the current, which is I1, minus I2, since I2 flows in the opposite direction. And that adds up to zero because that brings us around the entire mesh. So that's a pretty easy equation. On the second mesh, starting at this point, we're going to go across the inductor. Again, we have a voltage drop, minus J8, times the current will be I2 minus I1 in this case. Now we have a voltage drop across capacitor that's minus, but it's a minus J4, so that becomes plus J4 times the current, I2. And now we have voltage drop across the resistor, which is minus 3 times I2. And then we go across this voltage source, but in the opposite direction, so that would be a minus 5, and minus times a minus, which is plus J8.66, which adds up to 0 since we're around the entire loop. Now we need to solve those simultaneously. What we would do is we would solve this for I1 and plug that into our equation right here. We could do that, or we could also realize that I1 is a given. I1 is equal to the current of the current source. So we could replace I1 by this, or we could put it in this format like this. So that means that minus J8 times I2 minus I1, which is minus this, so minus 4.92 minus J 0.87. That would be plus J 4 I 2. We have minus 3 I 2 minus 5 plus J 8.66 equals 0. So now we're going to combine all the terms with an I 2 and all the terms without the I 2. So here we have I 2 times, we have a minus J8, a plus J4, and a minus 3. That gives us minus 3 minus J4. And then we have all the terms that do not have, uh, well, actually, before I do that, I think I want to get rid of the parentheses first. So let me do that first. That would be a little cleaner. Let me get rid of the parentheses. Otherwise, we may paint ourselves into a corner. So first, let's get rid of that. So we have minus J8 times I2. This times this, that gives us minus times minus, that's plus J, 4.92 times 8, that gives us 39.36, 39.36. A minus times a minus is plus, but J times J is minus, that gives us a minus 0 0.87. And let's see if I have that right, 10, take the sign of that, times 5. Uh, let's see, 10 times a sine times 5. Yes, that's correct. So uh, 8 times that, times 8 equals 6.95. So this times this, that would be minus 6.95. And then plus J4I2 minus 3I2 minus 5 plus J8.66 equals zero. All right, now we can go ahead and add all the terms with the I2 and all the other terms together. So we have minus J8 plus J4 minus 3. So we have I2 times minus 3 and minus 8 plus 4 
minus j4, not plus j4, minus j4, all right? And that leads, to, so we combine this, and this term, and this term, gets a little messy here. Now, let's see, the real part, minus 6.95, minus 5, that would be minus 11.95, and plus and plus, that would be plus j39.36 plus 8.66, that would be 48.02, which is equal to zero. Okay, solving that for I2, now we have I2 is equal to, bringing this to the other side, it becomes a plus 11.95 minus J48.02, and we divide that by what's in the parentheses here, which is a minus 3 minus J4. And that will give us I2, so let's go ahead and continue over here. I2 is equal to, converting this to real, to uh, magnitude and phase angle, 11.95 squared plus 48.02 squared. Take the square root, that gives us 49.48. So we have 49.48 with a phase angle of 48.02 divided by 11.95, inverse tangent, minus minus 76.02, minus 76.02 degrees divided by, here we get a magnitude of 5, let's factor out the negative sign, so that's minus 5 with a phase angle of, that would then be a positive 53.13 degrees. So I2 becomes equal to 49.48 divided by a negative 5, that's a negative 9.90. With a phase angle of 76.02 minus 53.13. Oh, let me try that again. 76.02, that's a negative, minus 53.13. That's minus 129.15 degrees. Now we can get rid of this negative sign by adding 180 degrees to that. So we have I2 is equal to a positive 9.90 with a phase angle of, add 180 to that, we get 50.85 degrees. And of course, that would be the current in amps. So now we've calculated I2 and we know I1 to be equal to the source. Notice a slight difference between what we did here and what we did in the previous video when we used node analysis is that I1 was the current only going through the inductor here and I2 was the current going through this branch right here. But it should get you the same results. If you want to find the current through the inductor, we simply go ahead and undo I1 minus I2 and we'll get the same value as we had in the previous video as well. And that's how it's done.